Lakshmi Puja on Diwali day. There was a beautiful Lakshmi Puja at Tofe and uh, Virish is in Vinaya yes. there a few years ago. That's wonderful. That is a sign they have given, so if your mind is running to a health scatter, they put you know, silver, yeah. it gives you a chance to pull back. Yeah, so but that means you, here we are only talking about when this is gained by sacrificing universal value, only then it will increase your discomfort levels. We are so not talking about just earning money will increase your discomfort levels. Do you understand the distinction? Yeah, so how would you place a person like in case I have all this money, right? right. And I go to spas and holidays yeah, and whatnot sure. for my comfort level yes. and enjoy that bit of it. Mm. But if I'm the person who only does this and never thinks of other things besides me, what would you say to that person? Super. This is very nice. So that's a second level of growth. The first level of growth is at least get this right. Yeah. The second level of growth is what Frey is talking about is now I have gained so much and that is a blessing to me and many people have participated to make it happen for me. So now it is my responsibility to give it back. That's the next level of growth. But what happens is this is the first level and the next level then you have to go to the next level. That's when you can say that I'm really responsible no one so here you are just a first level that you are at least not uh, not following universal values. Yeah. yeah. So that will come in the next uh, thing, right? That when you become much bigger and begin to be a contributor, that's a very that then you have really grown up. Right. There is also a situation where suppose somebody becomes comfortable. Yeah. And he has no uh, conflicts on that. He may lose his, you know. Actually, this is why it's very important uh, that uh, uh, we only operate at this level. So what uh, Vedanta shows us is a bigger picture. So the bigger picture is that you are not actually, truly speaking, nobody can be 100% comfortable thinking I'm a small individual because you have old age, you have disease, of people around you and your own. You see mortality which is right in front of you. So nobody can be 100% comfortable living with a limited vision of reality. This is why the second portion which is knowing the big picture is equally important. It's, it's partial fixing, it's not a total fixing. So you can't, and you can't have a thing it's still there will be ways that the person, as you uh, you know, you still feel uh, sick and you're not comfortable. So what we saw is, let's come back to that, okay? We, we saw that that was the last uh, thing. Here, is it clear that the discomfort level remains, right? If you have not followed the... Um, now, uh, Devish's question last time was, the other way, right? What have we said up to now is the not following of universal values leads to discomfort. And what you are really interested in is your comfort. So it's not a good deal. His question then was every discomfort is due to not following universal values. So do you see the other way? Now the relationship is not following universal value leads to discomfort. discomfort. His question was, every discomfort that a person feels, does it stem from not following universal values? Okay. Do you understand the nature of the question? Yeah. Yeah? So discomfort, is it only because of not following universal values? What does it mean is, suppose somebody comes to you and says, I am not feeling comfortable with myself. Can you conclude that that person is not following universal value? No. No. Wonderful. No. So that means, what we did at the end of the class is, examine different sources of discomfort. discomfort. Excellent. See, we need to hold everything that we have learned in organized manner. Your mind has to remember and hold it. Discipline approach. Huh? Discipline approach. Discipline. Otherwise what happens?
happens, we just take a little things here okay. and there and then exactly. So we don't add that, we don't state it. So the last thing we saw last time was why the um, not following universal value will give you discomfort. But the discomfort can come from more than one source. One of the sources is not following universal values. What are the other sources? Which are, uh, which are in conflict with like societal values which or uh, religious yeah, so values if which are not uh, the flip side, yeah. properly yeah. if you've not really not, not assimilated it if you have not that so you assimilated discount. excellent unassimilated that's why it is so important to understand the value of value right okay. so unassimilated that's a very good assimilated universal values also create discomfort with a health issue Yes. Yeah. So that means certain uh, not. Uh, so let's let's uh, combine the only health issues into the normal problem so with my living. Yeah. No one so knows so that you know that you're not following the universal value. Yeah, that that's first. That's no, that's the first one. That that's not one. Yeah. But now we are looking into different sources of discomfort. Okay. Not only this. Even compassion gives you. Excellent. And so that means the empathy also empathy. gives you discomfort. Somebody else's yeah. something yeah. that you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And that's a very actually a positive quality because that then makes you empathy makes you uh, not comfortable and compassion is what you do something to help others to what mitigate their pain. So that means sometimes even noble qualities such as empathy can give you discomfort. Do you understand? Because you are not indifferent to pain of others. That's a positive quality, right? So what empathy can give you discomfort. And this is why suppose you, you open the newspaper every day. So many people feel not comfortable because they want to wish world well. But when they open the newspaper, all they see is what? There is a fighting here, there is a war here, there and is the this murder here, over there. there, and there is a, so you feel not comfortable because you are not indifferent to these world events, right? So that is empathy. Could you put this here? Following Dharma, not getting desired results because of some unknown values. Excellent. So, when things don't happen your way, super. But you feel this also. This has got nothing to do with not following universal. Suppose, in fact, when you follow universal values and things don't happen your way, there is a lot of discomfort. I did everything right and still I didn't get what I, I thought I deserved. Exactly. That's a source of discomfort. Very good. What else? Personal suffering like the childhood uh, views or, you know. Excellent. So as we saw, suppose uh, uh, as a child I felt unloved. Right? So that means what I carry with me is what I am not loved enough. So that means then subsequently I can uh, interact with five more people or ten more people intimately. But I carry one message within me that is I am not loved enough. So that means regardless of how much others love you, you always feel what? Not loved. Not loved. So Swamiji was very uh, humorous. So he was very humorous. So he used to always say, you know, people keep asking each other, do you really love me? Do you really love me? So that means what? There is always this doubt that are you really, am I really lovable? Do, uh, can really somebody appreciate, it, uh, appreciate me as I am? So there is always this doubt that I'm not loved enough. And that he said used to happen a lot to sometimes you know very um, the privileged people because they always have this doubt why is this person with me? Is it because of my accomplishments or because 
It's a very common. Uh, so this is a test to prove it. If you want to test it. You person you love, or so many people are there, you just tell them I'm going tonight, would you like to join me? So you go to, first. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going, is it? I'm okay. going up. Oh, yeah, would you yeah, like yeah, to join me? Is it you go, go first. first. <laughs> to the big questions. Why am I here? Excellent. Right? So this is what you have to understand. Nobody can be 100% comfortable without knowing the bigger answers also. Right? Why am I here? This will never give you 100% satisfaction. Right? So let's first write what Preeti said. What Preeti said was only referring to health issues but it can be combined into what all the facts of living. What are the facts of living, health, then old age? Yeah. So old age is when losing, all your kids Losing your loved ones. Losing your loved ones. This is something which, you know, which are, you can be highly ethical, but that, this source of discomfort will still remain if you're a sensitive human being. So that means you can't ask me a question, the person will become totally other. Comfortable without this. When, uh, nobody will have complete nobody, uh, life without Somebody discomfort. will reduce their level of discomfort. Well, I think mean, a person, uh, once he understands the way to deal with the discomfort, and you know, he gets understood. But for it, all this has to happen. It is not as easy as yeah, just uh, getting rid of your discomfort. And this is what we just have Just to solving see. your so universal values does not solve all these Exactly. Excellent. Right? So that means, first let's write what Preeti said, and Preeti said about all the facts of life, these such as health, old age, you see people aging, it's, it's not easy to see all, so many people used to say that this person used to be like a lion, and now what, it's all the, the, the difficulty in speaking, difficulty in hearing, it's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. Even so relationships, they, like you mentioned also, sometimes with people, relatives, yeah. you have that discomfort. Yeah, you have yeah. discomfort, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So interpersonal relationships, you know, by the time you are absolutely right, nice, by the time you are in your mid-age, yeah. how many people that you felt that you really loved and then the distance, you know, comes. So all that is an emotional, absolutely. So we saw the emotional burden that we, um, but interpersonal relationships and situations can bring discomfort. And also what we said is what ultimately seeing all the loved ones going. These are all facts of life. Loss of loved ones. That will bring discomfort. And finally, what Kushar is saying, and that is what, so all this, this also required for you to, if you really want to solve all of this fundamentally, it will require you to solve the bigger questions. Why am I here? What is this cause of the universe? How am I related to it? And how, understanding that, I can relook at my whole life differently. Do you understand? So that means, the world is designed in a way that without solving this fundamental, uh, answering these fundamental questions, nobody can totally eliminate their discomfort. Do you understand? So that means we have no answer for fundamental questions. Not having an answer. Not having. Yeah. Not. So now, 
What does Vedanta do? Tell me. Which area of your life it touches? What you do? That's why. So you can't. If anybody asks, hey, Vedanta is only talking about all those big things, how does it relate to my day to day living? They can't ask this question if they have understood what is Vedanta. Because all these are sources of our discomfort, which area Vedanta does not address. Then, so the first area, not following universal values, then this is the book value of values. So it gets that in place. Then what about, uh, yeah, unassimilated universal values. It talks about how they are important for you, not as an obligation to others. So therefore it solves this problem. It tells us how to give an expression uh, to our empathy because empathy can make you frustrated and weak. Suppose uh, you, you, you feel for somebody but it only renders you helpless and angry. Why is this person? You can read the newspaper and be depressed every day. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, uh, so that means that empathy, instead of giving it an expression of compassion, doing what needs to be done, like Fay was saying, you do your part. Instead of that, you just sit and complain. So, what Vedanta teaches you is how to remain this sensitive person. Sometimes what people do is what? They just block that empathy and just do their business and they have blocked it. Is that the solution? Blocking empathy is not a solution. What is, this, uh, what is the way to deal with empathy is what? Do whatever you can. Expert, exactly. Proactively do what you need to do in order to... If you can't do anything, at least you can pray. Not to take it to the other level and let it become all consumed. Absolutely. Yeah, because a lot so of times people do that. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so sad this happened and they are also sad and they are Exactly. People are they for months and months. months. Get over See, it. exactly. So that means this is very true. What Faye is talking about is we are always in a ruminating mode. What it means is we keep talking about it. We are not in a problem solving mode. So what Vedanta says is, is that ruminating is not, you are not actually doing anything to solve the problem. You are only making yourself unhappy and also uh, the, the whole problems remain uh, what they are. So therefore, how to act intelligently on this feeling of empathy, how to cultivate it properly rather than what just waste it away or to block it. Okay, so it deals with this. When things don't happen your way, what does Vedanta say? Should happen. Huh? The will of the Ishwara. So that means, not we don't say will, the uh, will of Ishwara. That sounds very, uh, some it uncle is sitting exactly and then you deserve The laws which govern the, the result of the action, right? And they constitute. Isn't uh, Indra's web something? Yeah, yeah that, that you are doing you, something might be happening, but you don't know why it's happening. So, absolutely. So there are but so there is a total. Inter, there is a total connected. Yeah, the more and inter inter connected to be why it's happening. Exactly. Yeah. So it, at no given point in time, you have you can have information about how many variables are there and how they are interacting with each other to give you this result. But so that means what happens is when things don't happen your way, you don't conclude I'm a failure. You don't conclude the world is unfair. You just understand the complexity of the world and how the results come to you. Then it gives you what ability to intelligently navigate to work for what you want. That reminds me of Sumir's example of the ozone layer 3000. Exactly. Right? So that means it gives you uh, the knowledge of uh, you know, certain facts which enable you to deal with things which don't happen. It's not an advice. It shows you some facts of how the universe operates. Okay? Then, emotional burden. Vedanta talks a lot about the emotional burden. There is Shama, Dhamma. There are so many different ways that you have to address it. So it talks about that. Then it talks about uh, this Janma Mrityu Jana Vyadi. How does it solve this problem, certain facts of life? To be able to see See, this at the level of body and mind, can you totally eliminate it? No, you can't. So that means graceful acceptance. And
you working at it? Prasadhi. Whole life is there. The so whole life. life. You see, that means you are not fighting facts. Most of the time, we are not able to live with facts. Suppose your mind is fighting facts. When will it win? Tell me. Can it win? It never can win. So that means you can retain your discomfort. That is a cost. If your mind is not able to accept certain realities of life, it will cause discomfort. So therefore, there is what learning to live with certain fact. The mind has to incorporate and has to find ways within it. Okay? And the final thing is what the bigger answer. Am I really this mortal? Am I really this small person who is subject to the... Is that the only final reality about me? Then it shows much, much bigger picture about who I am and what is my relationship with each other. So you can see how Vedanta is so holistic and all-encompassing which then solves my problem of what we call discomfort. It is not one-dimensional, it is multi-dimensional. Right now, what is the scope of this book? Limited to... The scope of this book is limited to, right now, the discussion is limited to not following universal value and how it gives you discomfort. Do you understand? But the whole of Vedanta is all of this. That's why we say it solves the fundamental problem of humor and discomfort, which has various sources, not just one source. Yeah? Now, what you need to understand is, so, um, But it is a very, we, very solid foundation. Excellent. So that means this is a very solid foundation. As we study 20 values, which are yet to come, right, some aspects of these also get addressed, right? Because the values are written not only with this limited cheating and lying and uh, hurting and all, it is uh, written with what actually, if you really want to give, uh, get rid of your discomfort, you need to re understand life and your place in the grand scheme of things. So the values, as we will see, will in some values will incorporate this. Is it clear what we are doing and why we are doing what we are doing? Yeah? Okay. So let's read now. What is the time? You still have? Sir. Ten minutes. Okay. Who will read? We go to 20 values of an enlightened man. No, no, it's like expression comes from value structure. Okay, the last page. Last. Page? Last page, 21. Okay, life expression comes from value structure. Tushan. Life expression comes from value structure. The expression of my life is just the expression of my well-assimilated value structure. What I do is but an expression of what is valuable to me. I follow other people's values from time to time when it is convenient. But if these values have not been assimilated by me, they become simply obligatory values and do not reflect my value structure. They are more a source of conflict than a norm for behavior and are always susceptible to compromise. People are all struggling. Okay. Right, 28. 28. 28. It's my right, 21. 21. No, two different The printer print. 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 yeah. print. yeah. yeah. print. yeah. you said 21 to me all. Yeah. 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 28. 28. Oh, I'm yeah. 21. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you all have good a Yeah, well, everybody was involved in this, not that you were. Okay, are we all on the same page now? Yes, sir. Okay, so now you can read. Okay, I'm on the fourth, fifth, fifth six, seven line. Okay. Only assimilated values. Okay, listen to him. 
only assimilated values are my personal values. Assimilated values reflect what is valuable to me. An assimilated personal value requires no choice on my part. When I want certain unassimilated values to become part of my value structure, I must exercise deliberation in following them until I am convinced of their value to me. Their observance will become spontaneous for me, for which I will see its value in my personal life. Paying lip service to obligatory values is no more useful than the chorus of parrots in a tree who were singing out, Be careful of the hunter's net. A wise old parrot had seen the hunter coming and had called out the warning. The silly flock, however, did not look at the ground to spot the hunter. To understand the facts of the situation, to establish a personal content for the words, they, they are heard from the old bird. Instead, they continue to sit happily on the branches of the tree, repeating the words, empty of any real meaning for them. Be careful of the hunter's net. Even after the net had descended upon them, they wriggled and squirmed, caught in the web, screeching, be careful of the hunter's net. When I claim as my standards values in which I fail to see any personal gain, I am in as risky a position insofar as expressing those values as were the parrots in the tree mindlessly repeating the words. Enjoined or obligatory values will become assimilated personal values only when I see their value for me clearly and assimilate these values in terms of knowledge. For the, person, for the person with assimilated ethical values, life becomes very simple. No conflicts cloud his or her mind. For such a person, the teachings of Vedanta is like the meeting of gas and fire. Knowledge ignites in a flash. What does it say? It says that, it has, that your assimilated values need to be rock solid, otherwise there is going to be a lot of confusion. You will keep voicing your this thing, but you will not have got it. You will not really have got it in, within you. So this parrot's example is showing that, right? Yes. While yeah. they are under the net, they are still saying what, look, hunter is coming and he'll put you under the They're net. So they are already under the net. So that means what happens is, just talking, being a lip service to a value is not really a value. It's really assimilating why is it important for me and living the life. So that is the most important thing. Now why it requires, a, so following a value, why does it require certain deliberation? And then you get clarity of that. So why, because the situations are at times, there are several reasons why following a value is not as easy as it seems like. It may seem more from tomorrow onwards I'm going to be totally aligned human being, I'm going to follow all the values, I'm going to do everything right. But it's not as easy as that. When, when is the source of this problem? Tell me. There are several nuances to it. decide to follow the values, it may not be as simple to follow those values. What are the reasons for it? Comfort or discomfort, it's a compromise to worthy of the discomfort. Okay, so suppose you understand this the place of universal values <coughs> after reading this book, still it's not that from tomorrow you are going to be following it all 100% in every area of your life. So that means there is one reason, and that is there is a tendency, Gita is saying, that there is a tendency in the mind to justify and say what Amata Chalsha. In this, it's okay. So that means you always have this tweak. You, you, that the mind has a tendency to tweak it to suit your decision. So that means some comfort, exactly. So that means there is a tendency in the mind to. Yeah, but that means it's not going to harm anybody. I mean, my justification is that as long as it's not harming anybody, it's okay. Yeah, it's so, in conflict with the universal law. So that means you may still have difficulty 
because this is a tendency of the mind, right? To create a picture that suits your convenience rather than really attempt to understand it and do it that way. That is one. What are the other difficulties? No, 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 no. Excellent. So that means what no, happens no, no, no. is the old habits, they can't be changed overnight. You must understand that. So that means there is a habitual you who is used to doing things. Suppose you're, uh, you know, so that means the habits don't disappear overnight. So that means you have to acknowledge those habits and you need to work with them. So that means it requires what he told is what some deliberate effort. Just hearing it once will not do the job of transforming you because you have to break free from habitual ways of being. So that's what the habits create what the barrier and you need to be deliberate in breaking those habits. What are the other reasons why it is not so easy to do? Okay. So what it means is that there are many areas in life which are grey areas. We saw that. Which require interpretation. So that means it's not totally clear cut what is the right thing to do. Right? So that means grey areas, you need certain thinking. So what are those grey areas? Can you give me an example? He gives certain examples of values are universal but they are not absolute. They are relatives, they are subject to interpretation. What are the different examples? Surgeons and so excellent. Right? So everybody understands. The example he gives is everybody understands that I don't want to be hurt. That's a universal value. At the same time, you subject yourself to surgeon's knife. Is it called transgressing universal value? No. Why? Intentions are good. The intention is to actually get well and not to be harmed. So therefore, the gray areas are very important because they require. So suppose you know somebody is terminally ill. So many people ask, so should I tell that person or not? Is there any clear cut answer? No. There is no clear cut answer. What great white line was the block? So please don't call things like white lines. Because here to be, there are gray areas which require your discretion. So that means you have to learn to discern. 